Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, what I am plan planning to do in the next few lectures is to uh, study the case of complex tori. Okay. So, um, let me recall what a complex torus is. So, if you remember, uh, uh, we choose two complex numbers, omega one, omega two, which are non-zero. Okay, and uh, so we uh, fix this and assume that uh, their ratio is not a real number okay which means uh, they are as they are linear independent linearly independent over r okay and then we look at uh, the subgroup of uh, mobius transformations which correspond to translations uh, integer translations by integer multiples of omega 1 and omega 2 okay so you look at uh, uh, you look at z going to uh, n times uh, so z going to z plus n times omega 1 uh, plus uh, m times omega 2 you look at all these uh, translations by integer multiples of omega 1 uh, and omega 2 okay integer linear combinations of omega 1 and omega 2. Uh, where n and m n and m are integers okay and um, this is uh, of course these are uh, mobius transformations and uh, uh, you see uh, being translations uh, the only fixed point that they have is the point at infinity okay so these are uh, these these are uh, these form a subgroup of the uh, holomorphic automorphisms of uh, the of the complex plane okay so uh, the infinite the point at infinity is mapped to the point at infinity the rest of it is going to be the complex plane so the complex plane is any any finite complex number is mapped to a finite complex number okay so um, and uh, uh, you see uh, this uh, this group uh, this subgroup of course is uh, is abelian okay and uh, uh, it can be identified with uh, 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 z dot uh, translation by omega 1 so in fact uh, I can write it like this cross z dot translation by omega 2 right which is which is eventually which, which is which is uh, which is actually uh, isomorphic to z cross z right and what you do is you take the complex plane alright and then you go modulo this subgroup okay so you go c modulo uh, the subgroup z uh, translation by omega 1 cross z dot translation by omega 2 and uh, this gives you uh, the uh, a complex structure a Riemann surface structure on the torus okay which we call as uh, let me put t sub omega 1 comma omega 2 okay so this is a riemann surface structure on uh, on this which is topologically a torus a real torus okay and uh, uh, this map is a covering map this is a universal covering because uh, uh, c is uh, simply connected all right and this covering map if i call it as p omega 1 sub p sub omega 1 comma omega 2 then uh, this is a universal covering this is a universal covering and uh, because of this uh, the fundamental group of this is identified with the uh, deck transformation group of this cover and the deck transformation group is precisely this okay so uh, 
by 1. So, if I if I choose for example, point let us say 0 okay, and suppose the point 0 goes to a point x here okay, then uh, I have the identification fundamental group of uh, this torus uh, T sub omega 1 comma omega 2 based at x is identified uh, with uh, the deck transformation group of this covering which is uh, P sub uh, omega 1 comma omega 2 and this deck transformation group is precisely uh, is precisely this uh, uh, this group of translations z dot translation by omega 1 cross z dot translations by omega 2 which is which is exactly the same thing okay. So, in fact I should not even write isomorphic to in fact it is actually equal to okay um, and uh, and of course this is uh, this is the deck transformation group which is sitting inside the group of automorphic uh, the holomorphic automorphisms of the universal covering space which you know is uh, uh, which is uh, P delta 2 C uh, if you write it out as matrices these are all uh, elements of uh, P S L 2 C with uh, which are of upper triangular form all right fine. So, the question is uh, we want to uh, we want to look at um, so, uh, so we want to look at various possible Riemann surfaces that you can get in this way which uh, to begin with uh, you would get by uh, varying omega 1 and omega 2 all right. So, uh, so the question is uh, what is what is the set the set um, set of all uh, tori complex tori omega 1 comma omega 2 where omega 1 uh, comma omega 2 are uh, uh, complex numbers uh, non zero and uh, with non real ratio uh, omega 1 omega 1 by omega 2 not uh, not a real number so this this is a set of all possible complex to right all right and then you want to go you go modulo uh, holomorphic isomorphism okay so that means i am looking at holomorphic isomorphism classes of uh, complex story okay and i want to know uh, how many of uh, how many of them are there namely i want to know what is the set all right now um, well the of course the answer to this question is is uh, the following theorem which i had uh, uh, stated earlier so let me uh, recall this okay uh, uh, the the above the set of a uh, holomorphic uh, isomorph isomorph holomorphic isomorphism uh, classes of uh, complex tori is is uh, 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 is uh, can be can be naturally identified with uh, the set u mod p s l to z uh, which is the set of orbits of p s l to z uh, in u in the upper half plane u u okay this is the set of all z in c such that uh, imaginary part of z is greater than 0 okay. So, that set is naturally identifiable with uh, u mod p l 2 c and uh, when you have uh, a set modulo group what one means is of course the uh, orbits of the group uh, on that set for the group action on that set okay. So, uh, so I want to tell you one thing uh, namely recall that uh, the holomorphic automorphisms of U are elements of P S L 2 R okay uh, and and uh, P S L 2 Z is a, is a sub of uh, is a subgroup of P S L 2 R and therefore P S L 2 Z also acts on U okay. If a group acts on a, a set then a subgroup also acts on the set 
and you can also talk about orbits for that subgroup ok and that is exactly what we are doing here and the fact is that if you take the orbits this set is exactly uh, the set of uh, uh, complex tori up to holomorphic isomorphism ok. So, this is the first statement then there is more uh, the more interesting statement is that this set u mod p s l to z uh, acquires naturally the structure of a Riemann surface ok and that Riemann surface happens to be uh, isomorphic that is holomorphically isomorphic to the complex plane ok. Further uh, u mod p s l to z uh, is acquires naturally the structure of a Riemann surface uh, uh, holomorphically isomorphic to the complex plane ok. So, uh, the upshot of uh, the theorem is that this set is actually a Riemann surface and it and what is that Riemann surface it is just the complex plane. So, uh, so it is amazing that uh, this set has uh, a Riemann surface structure and that the Riemann surface is is uh, the complex plane ok. So, uh, this is what I would like to prove uh, uh, set out to prove in the next few lectures ok. So, there are two tasks that we will have to do the first thing is how to identify uh, this set with uh, the set of orbits of p s l to z uh, on u that is one uh, step. The next step is to explain how u mod p s l to z becomes a Riemann surface ok and how that Riemann surface is uh, uh, biholomorphic that is holomorphically isomorphic uh, with the complex plane ok. So, this is what we are going to do. So, uh, so I will begin with trying to show that this set is bijective with u mod p s l to z ok. So, the first thing I want to state is that uh, uh, so uh, just for no uh, for the sake of novelty uh, uh, note that that set uh, set of complex tori uh, uh, modulo holomorphic isomorphism um, is is also the same as well uh, 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 these are all going to be uh, notice uh, let us recall a theorem if x is a Riemann surface with fundamental group isomorphic to z cross z ok then x has to be a complex torus ok. So, that is a theorem that we have proved. So, I can just write this also as uh, a set of um, I mean uh, uh, well um, well I should not write set off and also put a bracket, but uh, let me not be too uh, pedantic about this. So, let me uh, let me just say uh, so um, I hope it is all right. So, let me clear let me rub this off ok. So, here uh, here I can also write as Riemann surfaces x with pi 1 of x uh, comma some base point base point does not matter isomorphic to z cross c ok mod low uh, holomorphic isomorphism ok. One can also state it like this you are looking at all those Riemann surfaces with fundamental group isomorphic to z cross z and you are studying them up to uh, holomorphic isomorphism ok. Uh, yeah, so in this sense what you are doing is well uh, you are looking at various possible Riemann surface structures that you can put on a real torus ok. The underlying structure is uh, a topological real torus and then you are looking at various Riemann surface structures that you can put on this and trying to look at how many non isomorphic structures you get ok. So, uh, so there is an underlying structure and which is the structure of the uh, real torus all right and there is a there is a superimposed structure which is that of a Riemann surface ok. And the question is 
how many extra structures can you give for the same underlying structure. So, this is uh, exactly uh, what is called a moduli problem okay, in, in, a, in its simplest form. You have a fixed structure on an object and then you know that you can put an extra structure on it. The question is how many extra structures non isomorphic extra structures that you can put on that okay. uh, and if you look at the set of all those structures does it have a geometry okay, that is the question of moduli okay and we get a beautiful theorem in the case of complex toroid. So, this is the first case where you get a beautiful theorem on moduli okay. So, uh, this do not was just for uh, just for fun okay. Now, um, well now I am going to do uh, make a small uh, uh, so uh, the first thing is uh, where did the upper half plane come into the picture okay. So, you can ask this question uh, where, where does the upper half plane come into the picture it comes because of the following thing because you can given any torus like that you can normalize it okay. So, so here is a here is a lemma okay the lemma is T you take this torus T omega 1 comma omega 2 okay this is is biholomorphic that is holomorphically isomorphic to the torus uh, omega 1 by omega 2 comma 1 okay okay. So, uh, which means I literally have these two complex numbers I divide throughout by omega 2. So, the second one becomes 1 the first one becomes omega 1 by omega 2 okay and uh, and and in in the same vein uh, so is also uh, biholomorphic to well uh, the torus t of uh, uh, well omega uh, 2 by omega 1 comma 1 okay. Of course, I could have div divided by uh, omega 1 right. So, um, now uh, what I want to tell you is that um, so I want to tell you uh, what this lemma means uh, with respect to you uh, you see omega 1 by omega 2 is not real uh, it is a non real ratio. So, it is a complex number it has an imaginary part and then if you take the imaginary part then either omega 1 by omega 2 or omega 2 by omega 1 has an imaginary part which is positive okay and uh, then you choose the one that has imaginary part positive and call that as tau okay and then that tau is an element of u okay. So, so what I am trying to say is that uh, choose tau uh, to be uh, well omega 1 by omega 2 or omega 2 by omega 1. So, that real part the imaginary part of tau is positive okay you can do that. I mean one of them has to have if one of them has imaginary part negative then the uh, the other one will have imaginary part positive okay. So, uh, so what is going to happen is you choose the one that has imaginary part positive okay uh, then you have tau in the upper half plane okay and and uh, uh, T omega 1 comma omega 2 is biholomorphic to uh, uh, maybe there is not enough space here let me write it uh, the next board okay then tau belongs to you um, and and the torus T omega 1 omega 2 is biholomorphic to well T tau comma 1 okay. So, so the moral of the story is that uh, instead of looking at uh, all possible tori like this it is enough to normalize uh, these two complex numbers in such a way that one of them is in is an element of the upper half plane and the other one is uh, is 1 okay. So, so, what this lemma says is that uh, uh, it is enough to look at T tau comma 1 with tau in u that is all all right with tau in u. So, real part of tau is greater than 1. So, so, so what is the upshot? So, let, let me write that down hence 
uh, set of uh, t omega 1 comma omega 2 well omega 1 comma omega 2 um, in non zero complex numbers omega 1 by omega 2 uh, not real is exactly the same as the set of t tau comma 1 uh, where tau is in u So, um, so it's enough to look at only. Uh, it's enough to look at only uh, uh, complex tori of this form uh, up to isomorphism. Okay. So in fact, uh, in fact, maybe I should I should not just simply write like this. I should write mod isomorphism. So mod mod isomorphism is equal to this mod isomorphism. In fact, I should write mod isomorphism, not 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 exactly said theoretically. Okay. So instead of looking at isomorphism classes here, I can as well look at isomorphism classes here. Okay. Now, what is the proof for this uh, lemma? The proof of this lemma. So that's where uh, so that's where uh, u comes into the picture. Okay. That's where u comes into the picture. So so in fact, what's happening is that you have uh, so we have uh, uh, so we have so let, so let me write that down. So you have actually a map. So we get a map <coughs> from U to uh, the set of all uh, Riemann surfaces. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, the set of all complex uh, tori uh, mod isomorphism. Namely, you just send tau to the isomorphism class of T tau comma one. Okay, so you have a map like this. And now uh, you know what it is that we are trying to prove. Uh, we are just trying to prove that this map uh, factors to u to the quotient u mod PSL two z, which is the, the orbits of PSL two z in u, and that uh, and when it factors, it gives rise to a bijective map with this. That will tell you that the set of uh, isomorphism classes of complex tori is naturally identifiable with the uh, uh, orbits of PSL two z. <coughs> On the upper half plane. Okay, so well, so let's let's give the proof of the lemma. This is pretty easy to prove. So what we have is uh, well. Uh, so let me write out uh, let me write out the the universal coverings for uh, uh, for these two. So I have C to well I have this projection omega one comma omega two. Then here I have. Um, uh, the torus complex torus defined by omega 1 and omega 2 okay and I have on the other hand C2 uh, there is this projection tau comma 1 and I have the complex torus uh, tau uh, 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 well uh, tau comma 1 okay where tau is where, where let us let me take tau to be uh, omega 1 by omega 2 if you want okay of course I could have also uh, equally taken tau equal to omega 2 by omega 1 right. Now what you do is uh, define this map uh, B of Z is uh, well uh, Z by uh, omega 2 okay. Look at this map B of Z is equal to Z by omega 2. Now that map uh, I can divide by omega 2 because omega 2 is not 0 and then it is going to take the complex plane onto the complex plane all right. Uh, it's a Mobius transformation, and it has uh, uh, so it's a it's a it's a holomorphic uh, automorphism of C. It's a holomorphic automorphism of C. Okay, and uh, uh, let's uh, see what it does. See, notice that this is just C mod uh, an equivalence relation, which is this the equivalence relation is. So this there is an equivalence relation. Let me put it equivalence sub omega one comma omega two. And what is this equivalence sub omega one comma omega two? Is you see, uh, z one is equivalent under this e un under this relation to z two, if and only if. Okay, z one is z two plus an integer linear combination of omega one and omega two. 
n let me say n 1 omega 1 plus n 2 omega 2 okay and this is exactly the uh, uh, this is exactly the equivalence okay I mean this is another way of saying that you are going modulo uh, translations uh, by integer multiples of omega 1 and omega 2 all right and uh, and well uh, and you have a similar statement here this is this is the complex plane modulo the equivalence relation given by tau comma 1 all right and this uh, well uh, the the definition is similar to this okay and now what I want you to understand is that uh, what does what does uh, 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 B do to a point like this if you remember these were points of uh, these were the points of a grid of parallelograms okay and you were actually we were actually going modulo that grid okay and see what B does to a point like this uh, B takes n 1 omega 1 plus n 2 omega 2 to well I do B is supposed to be division by omega 2 so what I am going to get I will get n 1 tau plus n 2 okay I will get n 1 tau plus n 2 but n 1 tau plus n 2 is a point of this grid okay the grid here is a grid uh, which is uh, which is given by tau and 1 okay you have you you form a parallelogram with edges 1 and tau okay and uh, then you repeat this parallelogram you get a grid of parallelograms and the end points of the grids the vertices of the grid are precisely these uh, elements of this form okay. So what B does is it takes this grid to that grid okay and because of this region uh, because of the fact that these are just uh, because of the fact that these are equivalence relations modulo going modulo those grids uh, you are going to get a map like this I am going to get uh, I am going to get a beta okay. I am going to get a beta such that this diagram commutes right. So this implies that at least set theoretically okay set theoretically I am going to get a uh, map a beta okay uh, uh, get map beta from this torus to this torus. Now the point I want to make is that uh, of course uh, this map is a bijective map because I have B inverse B is after all an isomorphism B inverse will be multiplication by omega 2 all right. So B inverse will uh, B inverse will also map uh, uh, a point like this to a point like this okay that will also take this the grid here to the grid here. So B inverse is going to induce an inverse for beta okay so beta is actually a bijective map. So, which is bijective with uh, inverse uh, uh, gotten from B inverse in exactly way in exactly the way we got beta from B. Okay, so so I get a bijective map. Okay, now I want to say that this bijective map is actually uh, biholomorphic map. Okay, so why is it biholomorphic? it is biholomorphic for the following reason okay. So let me break this diagram down into two commutative diagrams okay. So this is B followed by P tau 1 okay this is holomorphic and this is holomorphic mind you the holomorphic structure on this was inherited from the holomorphic structure above and once you fix this holomorphic structure this covering projection becomes a holomorphic map it is a covering in the holomorphic sense. Okay. Therefore, this is holomorphic. This is holomorphic. Therefore, this is holomorphic. Okay, and this map is a covering map, so it's locally invertible. It's locally biholomorphic. Therefore, this is this followed by this locally. Okay, but the but then again, this is also a composition of holomorphic maps, and therefore, this is holomorphic. Okay, so the moral of the story is that the map beta is holomorphic. So it's an injective holomorphic map. So it's a biholomorphic. Map, okay, so. Uh, beta is a biholomorphic map and this literally tells you that uh, this torus and this torus are uh, holomorphically isomorphic okay. So it is it is a very simple lemma right fine. So uh, the advantage as I told you of this lemma is that it is enough to look at only tori 
uh, which are given by points uh, uh, on the upper half plane right fine now uh, now let me go ahead and try to say uh, that uh, we get an identification of uh, uh, these uh, the isomorphism classes of these set of isomorphism classes of these tori uh, with u mod psl 2 c okay so uh, well uh, so suppose uh, so let let me start the argument like this uh, because I think it will be uh, uh, very uh, ideal for the exposition. Yes, correct. So, so suppose uh, the isomorphism class of T tau one comma one is equal to the isomorphism class of t tau 2 comma 1 where uh, tau 1 and tau 2 are the plane okay suppose they are isomorphic so this means that the torus defined by tau 1 uh, is isomorphic holomorphic isomorphic the torus defined by tau 2 okay now again we let us draw the uh, let us draw the covering uh, maps so I have C so I have this is P1 and uh, this is T tau 1 comma 1 okay then I have again C this is uh, P2 and I will have T uh, tau 2 comma 1 okay and uh, since it is given that these two are uh, holomorphically isomorphic let us choose let me choose uh, let me choose um, an isomorphism okay. Uh, let me call it something uh, let us say f. So, I am given a holomorphic isomorphism f between these two tori okay and uh, uh, what I am going to do is using this and covering space theory I am going to cook up a an element of PSL to z that moves tau 1 to tau 2 that is what I am going to do okay. So, um, yeah so how am I going to do this so you see because of this map so let us look at this uh, let us look at this whole diagram all right um, the first thing is uh, as we have done in the case of uh, as we have done earlier see if I take this composition if I take this composition okay this is this is a holomorphic isomorphism this is a covering therefore this continues to be a covering okay so this 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 is just uh, p1 followed by f that is what this is and this is also a covering all right and uh, you know uh, by the universal property uh, universal lifting property lifting properties of coverings this lifts to a map here okay. So for that I will have to do some work I will have let me choose 0 here okay and let us assume that uh, 0 goes to let us say a point x1 here okay and let me assume that f of x1 go uh, f takes x1 to x2 okay and let me fix a point uh, uh, let me call this as uh, uh, well uh, I do not even need to put 0 maybe I put z1 uh, let me call this as z2 fix a point z2 which goes to x2 okay under so p1 takes z1 to x1 p2 takes z2 to x2 f takes x1 to x2 all right and uh, I can I can lift this f circle p1 to a map f circle p1 tilde okay uh, which I would like to call as uh, uh, let me call this as b okay uh, such that this diagram commutes all right uh, and uh, uh, well this map b uh, is going to be uh, holomorphic uh, isomorphism because I can construct an inverse I can construct an inverse simply by taking f inverse okay just as I got b from f I will get b inverse by looking at f inverse because f is an isomorphism all right. So uh, p is a b so b is well b is an element of uh, it is a holomorphic automorphism of c so it is an element of p delta to c all right. So b uh, p has uh, uh, b can be identified with uh, uh, 
uh, you can give it a matrix representative in PSL 2 C namely A uh, B 0 D okay and uh, it is in PSL so A D A D is 1 so D is 1 by A okay so B will look like uh, uh, so this will be just look like A B 0 1 by A right uh, and of course so B so this means that B is the Mobius transformation B of Z is equal to A Z plus B by 0 Z plus T okay uh, which is how all uh, automorphisms of uh, holomorphic automorphisms of C look like right. Now now uh, one needs to look at uh, uh, what is happening to the to the deck transformation group uh, because of this okay. So this is a this is a map this is a whole diagram of spaces okay you know that uh, forming the fundamental group is uh, is functorial. So I am going to get a corresponding diagram for the fundamental groups. So let me write that down. So what I am going to get is I, I will have here uh, the fundamental group uh, first fundamental group of this torus uh, based at x1 um, uh, that is going to be identified with uh, the deck transformation group of this covering which is deck of P1 okay and uh, this f is going to give me uh, an isomorphism f lower star okay which is you know take a lip uh, take a loop at x1 you can produce a loop at x2 okay which is just uh, well you take just take the image of this loop there right and uh, do this for homotopy classes right. So this f lower star is uh, what you uh, what you get naturally because uh, the formation of uh, the fundamental group is functorial right and here what I will get here is the fundamental group of uh, uh, this, this this other torus t tau 2 comma 1 pays at x2 right and that is well identified with uh, the deck transformation group of p2 alright and you also have one more uh, um, there is also uh, uh, there is also uh, a map like this. So this is also a covering because of this covering I will get an identification of this the fundamental group of this namely this with the deck transformation group of this cover okay but then this followed by this is this. So what it will actually tell me is that this is the same as the deck transformation group of uh, f circle p1 okay this will be one and the same okay. This is uh, for example I proved this explicitly in the, the previous lecture okay. Uh, and so this is another identification this identification comes because of, of this covering alright and uh, because this diagram commutes this diagram also commutes and that is the reason why these two are the same okay and what about this map so this map is just uh, uh, you know conjugation alright namely uh, if you give me a deck transformation here how do I get a deck transformation there what I do is I go like this apply the deck transformation and then come back okay going like this is applying B inverse then applying the deck transformation here and then applying B okay. So it is just a map that sends A to uh, uh, B A B inverse is this is just conjugation by B and this is an isomorphism okay because B is because this map is an isomorphism this is a holomorphic isomorphism okay. So well um, so so uh, the upshot of all this is the following uh, I have uh, B uh, dot uh, deck P1 B inverse is equal to deck P2 namely uh, the deck transformation group of P1 and P2 are uh, deck they, they conjugates in the uh, group of holomorphic automorphisms of C okay. So I get this now uh, now let us go and uh, look at uh, what the generators uh, of these of these uh, deck transformation groups were chosen as and we will get a little bit more uh, we can extract a little bit uh, more of information okay. So 
well. So, we have see deck P 1 the deck transformation group of P 1 is uh, uh, is is has generators has generators uh, z going to z plus 1 z going to z plus tau tau 1 ok. These are the genera generators of deck transformation group after all the deck transformation group is precisely the uh, the subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms that you have to go mod to get this torus and the subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms here are translations by integer multiples of tau 1 and 1 ok. So, you get this ok and similarly deck P 2 has generators uh, z going to z plus 1 uh, z going to z plus tau 2. Notice that these two are the they are they are, they are, uh, they are isomorphic to the corresponding fundamental groups and the fundamental groups are just z cross z ok therefore there are two generators ok. Uh, now you see uh, so if you look at this what this will tell you is that if I take z going to z plus 1 then it is a conjugate of uh, an element here ok and similarly z going to z plus tau 2 is a conjugate by b of an element here ok. So, uh, uh, so let me uh, let me write down uh, uh, what I have worked out. Uh, uh, so, well so uh, you can write z going to z plus 1 is equal to b uh, z going to z plus alpha tau 1 as beta um, uh, dot b inverse and z going to z plus tau 2 is b dot conjugation by b of z going to z plus uh, gamma tau 1 plus delta dot b inverse ok where uh, alpha where alpha beta gamma delta are integers ok. After all you see uh, if you take z going to z plus 1 it is conjugate by b of an element here but how does an element here look like it is translation by an integer multiple of 1 and tau 1. So, so it will look like this ok. Similarly z going to z plus tau 2 is going to look like conjugate by b of an element here which I have taken it in this form. So, that is why you get these four uh, uh, four integers you get these four integers and you can guess that they are going to give you the uh, element of PSL to z. So, that is a calculation that one has to do ok. So, let me write it down. So, what happens is uh, if you write it down this is what you get. Uh, so, you see suppose I write it in matrix form this is 1 1 0 1 b is equal to b 1 0 1 uh, alpha tau 1 beta I mean this is just this written in matrix form I have I have I have just pushed uh, I have pushed this b inverse to the b on the right I have I have multiplied uh, both sides of the equation on the right by b ok and if I write it in matrix form this is what I get ok. Similarly if I do it to the second equation what I will get is I will get uh, 1 tau 2 0 1 b is equal to b well is equal to b times uh, 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 the other one which is 1 0 1 uh, gamma tau 1 plus delta I get this ok. If you write out if you if you make the comparisons and write out you will see that this is true if these these two are true. So, this is true if and only if uh, you will see that uh, b equal to 0 and you get uh, alpha tau 1 plus beta is 1 by a square where you know this a was this a that we chose for uh, uh, the matrix representative of b in PSL PSL 2 c ok. And uh, here you will get um, these two are equal I mean this is equivalent to uh, well 
uh, again um, uh, of course uh, b is 0 um, and you will get tau 2 uh, by a squared uh, is equal to gamma tau 1 plus delta ok this is what you get. Now uh, you can you can see immediately that uh, you know if I if I if I try it if I eliminate a squared what I am going to get is I am going to get gamma tau 1 plus delta by alpha tau 1 plus beta is equal to uh, tau 2 ok. So what you have gotten is uh, uh, an element of PSL 2 z which is moving tau 1 to tau 2 ok. Now there, there is a point here there is a check that has to be done to say that uh, gamma beta gamma minus alpha delta is actually equal to 1 ok. Uh, you one has to one has to for example even verify that uh, this is really a Mobius transformation so one has to really verify that gamma beta minus alpha delta is equal to 1 ok it is for example it is not equal to 0. So how does one do that so uh, uh, the claim is uh, 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 gamma beta minus delta alpha is actually equal to 1 ok. So uh, for, for this uh, it is enough to prove that gamma beta minus delta alpha is non zero see uh, gamma beta minus delta alpha if it is not zero okay it is an integer okay and it is uh, it has to be invertible because it is a determinant of an integer matrix okay so it has to be an invertible integer so uh, it uh, if you prove gamma beta minus delta alpha is not zero then you will get gamma beta minus delta alpha equal to plus or minus one okay then I will have to eliminate the case that it is minus 1 and eliminating the case that it is minus 1 is precisely where I am going to use that tau 1 and tau 2 have, re have real part I have, have imaginary part greater than 0 ok which is, a which is a very very direct calculation. So let me explain uh, let me write out that calculation ok. So suppose suppose it is 0 ok um, I mean I am trying to give a very elementary argument suppose gamma beta minus delta alpha is 0 ok then what you do is uh, you use these two equations you use you use these two equations and try to use the fact that uh, uh, so you know um, I, I multiply this equation by delta so that I get a delta alpha alright then I multiply this equation by a beta so that I get a beta gamma and then if I subtract alright then this delta alpha tau 1 minus beta gamma tau 1 is going to go away and if I do that what I am left out with is 0 equal to beta tau 2 minus delta by a square this is what I will get ok. Multiply this equation by delta multiply this equation by beta ok uh, and then subtract you will get this right and uh, you have to use gamma beta minus delta alpha is 0 ok you will get this. So but, but this will tell you that you know beta tau 2 is delta which is impossible because you see beta is an integer delta is an integer tau 2 is a complex number this will tell you that tau 2 is equal to for example if beta is not 0 it will tell you that tau 2 is a rational number a real number for that matter it is which is which it is not because tau 2 is imaginary alright. So, so this will imply the only way is beta equal to delta equal to 0 there is no other way alright. But you see if beta is equal to delta is 0 see for example you know if beta is 0 then alpha is not if beta is 0 alpha tau 1 is 1 by a square that is not 0 so alpha is not 0 alright and what you will get is you will get uh, uh, if I put it uh, 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 if I put it here I will get gamma uh, so I will get uh, so I will get uh, alpha is not 0 and tau 1 is equal to uh, 1 by uh, alpha a square alright and if I put it back uh, into this alright and use the fact that delta is also 0 I will end up with getting uh, gamma by alpha is equal to tau 2 ok. So uh, uh, I just cross delta is 0 I cross multiply this a squared and a squared tau 1 uh, I write it as 1 by alpha ok then I will get gamma by alpha equal to tau 2 which is again nonsense because you see now tau 2 uh, 
it becomes a rational number gamma and alpha are integers okay so that is not possible <laughs> absurd. So uh, it is a very elementary argument to show that uh, alpha gamma beta minus delta alpha is is uh, non zero okay so gamma beta minus delta alpha is not equal to zero okay okay so now uh, we need to see why gamma beta minus delta alpha is actually equal to 1 all right so for that what one needs to do is uh, to look again uh, uh, to look again at the at this diagram here one has to look at this diagram here and uh, look at it carefully uh, the first thing that uh, uh, we should remember is that uh, uh, both the uh, both deck transformation groups you see they are uh, you know they can be identified as uh, z modules okay with uh, uh, with uh, with with complex numbers okay so what you can do so one can write down the following uh, um, so let me write down that diagram again uh, so i have uh, uh, so i have the deck so i have deck p1 right on uh, here and then i have this uh, isomorphism which is conjugation by b this is just the map a going to uh, b a b inverse okay and this is an isomorphism of that of the deck transformation group of the covering given by p1 with the deck transformation group of the covering given by p2 okay and well uh, you see this deck transformation group can be identified uh, you see with this this is an isomorphism with z dot uh, so let me follow the follow what I have written down z dot 1 uh, cross z dot tau 1 okay. So what I am doing here is uh, an element here is translation by an integer multiple of uh, 1 uh, and an integer multiple of tau 1 okay. So there are so it is given by 2 a pair of integers and I am just identifying that uh, with these 2 integers here okay. So there is an isomorphism like this that makes this uh, yeah so this isomorphism actually shows that this is a z module okay this is an isomorphism of z modules. So uh, similarly I have an isomorphism here this isomorphism will be in z dot it will go to z dot 1 cross z dot tau 2 uh, tau 2 of course this is because of this you see deck p1 has generators z going to z plus 1 and z going to z plus tau 1 and deck p2 has generators z going to z plus 1 and z going to z plus tau 2 it is only big and you see these are generators as as z modules okay. So you have this identification and now if you look at uh, one would like to look at this map which is given by the commutativity of this diagram okay. So uh, well notice that this map is uh, uh, conjugation by b it has an inverse the inverse map is just conjugation by b inverse okay obviously and this conjugation by b induces let me call this as uh, let me call this map see mind you this map is also going to be an isomorphism it will be an isomorphism of z modules okay. So this is also an isomorphism and I will get so this this let me call this as gamma prime okay and then I will have a map like this. So the conjugation by b inverse is going to induce a map like this namely this map is this followed by this followed by this okay that is this map and this map is this followed by this followed by this okay. So I have this gamma and I have gamma prime okay and uh, it is obvious that you know gamma and gamma prime are z module uh, homomorphisms and they are inverses of each other okay gamma uh, gamma prime or z module homomorphisms and of course gamma prime is gamma inverse okay by the very way it is defined all right. Now uh, the important thing is what is uh, what is the uh, 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 what is the matrix for gamma see gamma is a map from uh, 2 copies of z 
two two copies of z. So it is given by a two by two matrix with integers in z. Okay, and what is what is that map? And that map, see, the claim is this gamma. So you, so let's calculate. So take the element one here. Take the element one here. See this. I need to know what where uh, gamma of one goes to. All right. So take the element one here. This element one is identified with the transformation z going to z plus one. Okay, and that transformation will go to b inverse dot uh, uh, z going to z plus one dot b. Okay, and then I am going to identify it with this. All right. So, but what is go back to this? Uh, go back to this uh, uh, equation here. B inverse dot z going to z plus one dot b is actually z going to z plus alpha tau one plus beta. Okay. So, uh, when I come here. I will get the uh, I will get the map z going to uh, z plus alpha tau one plus beta, and if I bring it down here, I will get the elements alpha times one plus beta times tau one. So I will bit basically get alpha comma beta. Okay. So gamma of one, okay, gamma of one. If you want, what I mean by that is gamma of one comma zero. Okay. You take one here and take zero there. All right. This is alpha comma beta. Okay, and what is gamma of what is gamma of zero comma tau two? What is gamma of zero comma tau two? So you take tau two. Here it will go to the uh, uh, deck transformation, which is translation by tau two. So it will go to z going to z plus tau two. All right, and here it will go to its conjugate by b inverse. So namely, I will get b. So now go back to this diagram and see b inverse z going to z plus tau two b. Is actually z going to z plus gamma tau one plus delta? Okay, so uh, the image of tau two here will be the translation by gamma tau one plus delta. And you see, if I take its uh, take its uh, image here, I'm going to end up with uh, 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 delta. Uh, so it's gamma. So it's delta comma gamma. It's delta comma gamma. Okay, if I write it in this order. Gamma plus delta tau one. Okay, that's what it is. All right, and you see, so you see, what the this tells you that matrix of gamma of gamma is alpha, beta, delta, gamma. Okay, and uh, 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 I think I'm not writing it correctly. Uh, uh, so it's alpha times uh, wait a minute alpha is equation tau tau one okay so beta alpha i should write it here also correctly so it's beta times one plus alpha times tau so it's beta alpha okay this is the matrix of tau and uh, you see for for gamma prime also similarly you will get an integer matrix with integer, integer entries all right and what will happen is you see the whole point is gamma and gamma prime are isomorphisms they are z module isomorphisms okay so the fact is uh, so the so matrix so let me write this here beta alpha delta gamma all right times let, let me write matrix of gamma prime okay if i compose i should get the identity matrix Okay, and this is I get this because this this is the inverse of gamma prime. Gamma gamma is the inverse of gamma prime. Gamma uh, that's right. Okay, gamma prime inverse is gamma. Uh, gamma inverse is gamma prime. All right. So I get this. All right. I notice that the matrix of gamma prime will also have integer entries. I mean, it's, you have to write it the same way as you wrote gamma. But in any case. What will happen is this. See, this is the equation that helps me because now if I take determinant, if I take determinant and notice that all my calculations are happening in z, okay? They are happening in z, the integers. So if I take determinant, I'll get what I'll get is I'll get beta gamma minus delta alpha, okay? Times uh, determinant of uh, matrix of gamma prime of gamma prime. Is equal to one. Okay, 
now you see I get a product of 2 integers uh, equal to 1 ok. So, the possibility is that either both are plus 1 or either or both are minus 1. So, this will tell you that beta gamma minus delta alpha is equal to plus or minus 1 ok. Now of course, uh, one can rule out the case that beta gamma minus delta alpha is minus 1 because of the condition that tau 1 and tau 2 have imaginary part positive that is uh, that is because of the following calculation. Uh, so, let me write that down. Uh, so, um, here I am. So, if you calculate imaginary part of tau 2 ok it is by definition uh, imaginary part of well um, tau 2 is now going to be um, where have I have written it there I have written it here tau 2 is gamma tau 1 plus delta by alpha tau 1 plus beta. So, gamma tau 1 plus delta by alpha tau 1 plus beta this is what you may this is what it is and you write the imaginary part of this as this minus its conjugate divided by 2 i ok you just write it out and if you if you simplify it what you will end up with is you will get delta alpha minus beta gamma times uh, minus of imaginary part of tau 1 divided by modulus of alpha tau 1 plus beta the whole square this is what you will get ok if you make a very simple calculation you will get this and uh, and you will see that you see imaginary part of uh, tau 2 is positive imaginary part of tau 1 is positive ok and this quantity is also positive therefore you see this quantity has to be negative ok. So, this will tell you imaginary part of tau 1 uh, imaginary part of tau 2 positive will tell you that uh, delta alpha minus beta gamma has to be minus 1. So, that will tell you that well as we wanted gamma beta minus delta alpha uh, is equal to plus 1 is equal to 1. So, this confirms that uh, you know this matrix. So, this this means that your matrix uh, gamma is actually an element of PSL 2. So, gamma is an element of PSL 2 ok. Uh, it is an element of SL2 and you can take the image defined uh, take its image in the uh, uh, in the quotient group PSL2 ok. Co consider consider uh, well let us consider this namely uh, the following thing gamma delta um, alpha beta this is an element of uh, PSL2z ok this is also an element of PSL2z again. Um, and you see uh, this this takes uh, tau 1 uh, to tau 2 ok that is what I want. So, uh, well if I had chosen uh, these 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 constants correctly I would have got the mat I would have directly got alpha beta gamma delta but anyway it does not matter. Uh, so, the point is I have got an element of PSL 2 which takes tau 1 to tau 2 alright. So, uh, the upshot of the story is if the torus uh, complex torus defined by tau 1 in the upper half plane is isomorphic to the complex torus defined by tau 2 in the upper half plane then there is an element of PSL 2 z which takes tau 1 to tau 2. Now, the point is that this whole argument can be reversed conversely if I am given a PSL 2 element which takes tau 1 to tau 2 ok then one can work out ok and one can uh, so in that case you know uh, uh, alpha beta gamma delta are given <coughs> integers such that you know gamma beta minus alpha delta is equal to 1 ok I am given this. So, in some sense uh, so I am given gamma ok and from gamma I have to cook up uh, I have to cook up an isomorphism I have to cook up an isomorphism uh, between these two tori ok and uh, how do I do this well because I am given gamma what I can do is first uh, I can first uh, cook up this b ok I can cook up this b which is given by these coefficients ok and how do I get these uh, coefficients well you see uh, I, I set uh, if you go back here I set small b equal to 0 alright and then uh, I set a to be a square root of 1 by 
uh, alpha tau 1 plus beta ok. So, I set a like that and then I consider this transformation a 0 0 and instead of d I put 1 by a that will give me a uh, Mobius transformation b ok and that Mobius transformation you can check will give me uh, a ma yeah, that will give me an isomorphism from c to c alright. Now, that isomorphism because of that isomorphism that isomorphism will actually go down the reason why it will go down is because uh, the lattice uh, defined by 1 and tau 1 namely the z sub module of c defined by 1 and tau 1 will be mapped to the z sub module of c defined by 1 and tau 2 that is because of the way uh, that is because you are given that element of PSL2 uh, which does this ok. Therefore, uh, therefore this uh, you will get this B ok and it will go down to a map like this ok. You can cook up the B ok given alpha beta gamma delta and a PSL2 matrix which takes tau 1 to tau 2 namely for which this holds. I can write down b explicitly all I have to do is I have to set small b equal to 0 I have to take instead of d of course I have to put 1 by a alright and for a I have to take just square a uh, square root of 1 by alpha tau 1 plus beta that is all I that is all that is all I have to do ok and then I will get this b ok and you can check that this b uh, takes uh, any integer linear combination of tau 1 and 1 into an integer linear combination of tau 2 and 1 ok that is that is because of the way uh, uh, that is because of unimodular transformation alpha beta gamma delta that is already given to us ok. So, you will see that it will carry the grid defined by 1 and tau 1 to the grid defined by 1 and tau 2 and therefore, you know it will induce a map like this ok and the B inverse will induce a map in the other direction. So, this map will be automatically bijective the only question is why is it uh, a holomorphic isomorphism it is very simple because you see what will happen is well if I am given b then b for th this is of course holomorphic it is a it is a Mobius transformation then this is also holomorphic therefore this becomes holomorphic ok. Now this map is because it is a covering this map is locally this followed by this because you see this map p 1 is a local homeomorphism it is a it is a it is a local bi holomorphism. So, locally this map can be written as inverse of this followed by this by taking an admissible neighborhood at, at any point ok. So, this map becomes a composition of two holomorphic maps therefore, this becomes holomorphic in the similar way it is inverse also becomes holomorphic becomes holomorphic therefore, these two be, um, uh, tori become uh, isomorphic by holomorphic ok. So, everything can be the whole argument can be reversed ok the whole argument can be reversed. So, uh, the upshot of the story is the following uh, is the following uh, result. So, let me write that down. Um, so, um, so let me write. So let me write this, um, just for the sake of completeness. Conversely, given. Uh, alpha beta comma delta integers such that such that uh, uh, gamma tau 1 plus delta by alpha tau 1 plus beta is equal to tau 2 and well uh, gamma beta minus delta alpha is equal to 1 ok. Define b by a 0 0 1 by a where a is just given by this formula 1 by root of alpha tau 1 plus beta ok. Then uh, b induces then b uh, takes uh, uh, z dot 1 cross uh, z dot uh, tau 1 
uh, it takes this subset of complex numbers okay. So this is this is set of all complex numbers which are integral multiples of 1 and tau 1 so it is of the form n plus n plus m tau 1. So this will go into z cross 1 uh, z dot 1 cross z dot tau 2 okay. So this this will imply b induces f from the torus defined by tau 1 to the torus defined by tau 2 okay and and has uh, and uh, and b inverse of course and b inverse induces f inverse okay the only thing that is left is to sh see that f is holomorphic that is because uh, f is f is holomorphic since uh, um, so let me draw again draw a small diagram and rub this side. So uh, let me draw the diagram and then come back here. So I have C to C, I have uh, B and this is P1, this is the covering projection for the torus defined by tau 1 and this is P2 the covering projection defined by torus defined by T2 okay and this is my F and this diagram commutes okay and well this map is going to be uh, B uh, P2 P2 circle B that is what this map is it is this followed by this okay and well and of course this diagram also commutes. So what I am going to say is that F is holomorphic since B circle P uh, P2 circle B P2 circle B is holomorphic okay this is holomorphic because it is a composition of holomorphic maps and because P1 is locally by holomorphic and P1 P1 is locally by holomorphic. Okay. Therefore, f is an injective uh, holomorphic map, so it is a biholomorphic map, and therefore we have proved that uh, the tori are isomorphic. So, you see, therefore, the uh, moral of the story is that uh, what I can do is from U uh, to the set of all complex tori isomorphism class of tori, which are the form T tau comma one uh, tau uh, belonging to U mod isomorphism. Okay, I have this map tau being sent to T sub tau comma 1 isomorphism class by holomorphic isomorphism class holomorphic isomorphism class then this map uh, uh, goes down to a map to the quotient u mod p s l 2 z okay. So I have I have the quotient u mod p s l 2 z this is uh, the set of orbits of uh, p s l 2 z on the upper half plane okay and uh, well uh, 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 two points go to the same point here if and only if they are they are moved mobile uh, by an element of p s l 2 z that is what we have proved. So you get a map like this you get a map like this now this map is of course uh, by definition surjective therefore this is also surjective and it is also injective because for for the simple reason that you know uh, if you have uh, if you have tau 1 and tau 2 which uh, give rise to the to isomorphic tori then tau 1 and tau 2 have to be in the same orbit of psl2c so this also this is as well, this is injective as well as surjective so this is a bijection so you see this completes the proof of the fact that the set of uh, isomorphism classes holomorphic isomorphism classes of complex tori is uh, is bijective to this set namely the sets of set of orbits of psl 2 z in u okay. So this is the first part of the story now uh, what we need to do in the next what we will do in the next lecture is to show that this is uh, a Riemann surface okay you have to show that this is a Riemann surface and that this map this bijective map okay uh, this you one, one wants to show that this is a Riemann surface and one also wants to show that this is actually uh, 
the and the Riemann surface that it is is actually the complex numbers. Okay, that's what one wants to show, right? So that is the next part of the story, right? So I'll uh, we'll continue the next lecture, right?